So you already have your pit road done, which from the earlier video I did put through here. I switched it to the infield. So now we need a pit extension to get the cars from the garage area onto the track. So here's what you do. I like just to show the garage spots to see where everything is. We'll start right about here. We'll record a path. And it'll be very similar to how we did the original pit line. Alright, now you have to make sure you click Mark as first pit extension. And then we'll join his branch just like we did with the original pit road. But the, now the one difference is, we'll just turn, is this last waypoint, you'll cap end of path segment. While it won't do anything or pop up on the screen, you still need to click it. Unselect, click save, and now you're car should have a line to follow out of the pits. Alright, I also wanted to show you another option for a pit road. In this example, since I did the pit extension coming from the garage area onto the track, this is how I did pit road. This way the pace car is inside the track. Uh, it can get out sooner. Um, there's not as much confusion, less things to hit. I know some tracks what have where the walls are completely in where you have to have your pit road inside the track. This is one example of you know how I, I do it is we just cu you know cut through the center. Uh, you can go you know across the track or down you know like the back straightaway if it's a bigger track. But in or this way gives you a smoother transition sometimes uh, due to uh, that the pit road can be branched off of the, the fast path like this. Uh, I tagged in the bottom here should be Keeper's video, and he'll go on and explain in his video how to get a smoother transition and a few other things that he found out on his own that, to be honest, I never knew about the timing of the pace car, when it can come in or out, uh, based on when the yellow flies. Uh, just check his video out, it should be in the bottom here. Uh, it's some good stuff, some new stuff, you know, I didn't know it. But uh, as you can see, just based off the, fa the fast line, that, you know, the pace car and the AI will peel right off the line, go into the pits, into the infield. You know, some tracks this is doable, some tracks it's not. So we'll want to start the camera editor. We'll click that, and as you can see, there's two these two yellow circles here. A lot some tracks will have four, five, six. What those are is the activation radius for each camera. So the track cams. Let's just delete them. And let's start a new one. So I usually just drive my car. You can also use your arrow keys, but it's just easy to drive it. And then I'm using the numpad. Make sure you have numlock off. And I am positioning this to basically where the camera guy would be standing. Or where the camera is, if it's one of those, you know, like digger cam type things. So this looks about good. We'll start new cam, tracking cam. Alright, scroll around, select the cam, we'll edit the cam values. I always do log multiplier 5. I'm fairly sure the only reason I do it, I saw it on an ISI track. 
and it fixed my issues with the cars lotting out while watching the replay. So that's what I set all my cams to. And now let's zoom out real quick. You can see how it's in the infield and it's not selecting the corner how exactly I'd want it to. So what I'll do is I'll change the activation radius to right here. Or activation lock point. Now you can see it moved in, moved to the right. So we might let's move it over a little. It's not exactly where I wanted it. That's better. So let's select the cam again, and that's oh, make that a little bit bigger. Okay, back. So you view select cam's output, but it doesn't want to do it. There we go. Toggle cams. So there's the camera. There's what we're doing in the game, and that's what it will look like when you're viewing it. And if that's too small for you, you can always unselect. We'll save that camera. Go to Waypoint Editor and hit Page Down. So there's what that camera angle will look like. I'm going to show you another option with the cameras. So let's unpause it. Do new camera tracking. select the camera and then I know it's going to be a little goofy but we're, I'm sure you've seen cameras that would follow like the, sh the straightaway or a certain area like uh, the S's and it follows the S's and not necessarily follows the car that's what I'm going to try to show you here real quick and then what you do is place camera movement now it doesn't always work the first go but it does look like it did this time. All right, turn those on. Let's start on the far end so you can see. Let's unselect. Let's hope this works first go. Okay, let's get out of waypoint, page down. So there's a normal camera. Should another normal camera. Now here's that other camera. Now that camera moves kind of quick. So here, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to pause our video real quick. All right, I'm going to go back into camera editor, hit page up. We're going to edit this camera, and then we're going to hit the values. And this movement rate, let's just drop it down to 1. And that should allow the camera to smoothly go with the truck instead of hauling ass down the track. Select. Let's go to waypoint editor, page down. Pause it. It's not that easy to drive like this. All right, now it should be a little smoother once. But well, that's just another option for you. Here's another example of what I just showed you. By this point, I highly recommend saving the cams and the AI file, hop out, go to your main R factor screen, come back in, because R factor needs to kind of set some of the waypoints for your grid and the pit spots. Uh, save it again and go test. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them here at YouTube or over at my forum at nsrs.jellcenter.com. Thanks for watching.